Good evening all and thank you for joining us at this evening's information webinar. Uh, my name is Brefni O'Rourke. I am the program manager for the Alba Abrigan Rejuvenation Plan. The Alba Abrigan Rejuvenation Plan is part of Fingal County Council's Economic Enterprise, Tourism and Cultural Development Department and we're located here in George's Square of Abrigan in the hub space where we're coming from this evening. Shortly I will pass you over to our anchor and panel members but before I do so two items. Firstly, purpose. The primary purpose of this evening's webinar is to share with you insights and analysis from our survey work undertaken to date on the places and spaces in the town. Secondly, a summary of the current position, key concepts and insights emerging with regards to both the public realm and active travel and transportation in the town. So the second item is housekeeping. Although primarily the purpose of this evening is an information webinar, we hope to keep some time back for questions. If you want to submit a question, there's a question and answer facility which you will find in the top right hand corner. It will be passed on to the team and considered in developing out our team town strategies. We will have information panels here in the hub on George's Square, along with members of the team tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday between 4.30 and 6.30. So you are welcome, all of you, to pop in if you do have any further questions or welcome discussion. Uh, myself and members of the team will be present. So with that, I uh, to pass you over to Aoife Sheridan, Senior Executive with Fingal County Council, for a formal welcome. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this information session this evening. Tonight we're going to give you an update on some of the work that the Arbal Brigand team has been doing on two of the overarching pieces of work for the town, the public realm strategy and the active travel and transportation strategy. These two pieces of work sit above and guide all of the public realm improvement work projects that we're planning to do here in the town. In June 2021, we looked for your input on a public realm survey. And tonight we've invited our consultant James Hennessy from the Paul Horgath company to give you an update on the results of that survey and the work that we've been doing with him to develop the public realm strategy. The objective of this strategy is to make sure that all the projects that our Balbriggan team is delivering all make sense and work together. The council is procuring design teams for each of the projects uh, separately, so there's a good chance that there'll be different design teams with different ideas about various projects. So the idea between doing a pub public realm strategy is to give the design teams a framework to work within so that there's a consistent thread through all the projects and ensure that they all work together to improve the overall look and feel of the town, make the most of existing assets such as the beach and the river and improve those aspects of the town that you've identified to us that need improvement. James is going to outline the key objectives and aims of that public realm strategy. And this is coming out of information that we've gathered from the survey and the various focus groups that we did last June. And that now forms the basis of the strategy and that'll guide all the public realm projects in the town, including the Key Street project, which is currently in progress. The Key Street project will be moving into the planning planning permission stage towards the end of Q2 this year and at that point everyone will have an opportunity to make submissions on the plans for the Key Street development before it moves on into the construction phase. So all of the Balbriggan projects are being phased out over the period to 2027 so that we can stagger the projects and make sure that we have enough time to plan and develop each of the projects. So the Key Street project will include the Ornolai Boathouse and works down at the harbour are also in procurement at the moment. We also have a design team appointed for two to four Dublin Street as well. So these are the first projects that we're going to be working on in the public realm and delivering. The other projects are going to be staggered over the next five years out to 2027 for delivery. The second piece of work that we're going to uh, talk to you about this evening is the active travel and transportation strategy. And while the public realm survey and plan is mid cycle because we've already talked to you already about this last year. This piece of work for active travel is really just at the beginning. We're just starting out with data gathering and information gathering. So this piece of work is just to open the conversation with you about 
what active travel looks like and what is the vision for Balbriggan in the years to come. So improving the active travel options in Balbriggan isn't something we can deliver overnight. It will be delivered in phases over a number of years. So we just want to start the conversation with you and start thinking about what that looks like and what's important to the town. And this evening, Kevin is going to talk to you about the existing conditions in the town. His team has been carrying out a number of surveys and some face to face interviews as well to find out what the traffic conditions are in the town, where, ta where cars are going, what time are certain junctions busy, how are people getting around? So this information is going to set a baseline for the strategy and tell us where Balbriggan town is at now. Kevin's also going to bring us through some uh, some improvements that have been done in other towns to give us some ideas about what their problems were and what measures they implemented to give us some ideas about where we can go in the future. We want to share this information and these insights from these experts with you so that we can open the conversation about how we move this strategy forward together for a clear vision of what kind of town we want Balbriggan to be in 10 years time. I'm going to hand over now to James Hennessy from the Paul Hogarth company and he's going to take us through the findings of the public realm survey and if anyone has any questions for either Paul, Kevin or myself please remember as Brefney said you can put them in the chat facility and we'll get to as many questions as we can um, after the presentations. Thanks very much James over to you. Thank you Aoife and good evening everyone. Uh, great to be with you uh, virtually uh, in Balbriggan. Um, I'm going to just take you through the, the findings of the first public realm survey that took place at last year. Um, as Aoife explained, this comes all from the um, Owl Barbergen um, uh, initiative for the rejuvenation plan and building on the good work that's happened uh, to date. That includes the series of projects that have been already identified and a number of them are at the, the starting point of, of being developed. And our job as landscape architects and urban designers is to help to provide some consistency and to look at the glue, the public realm, the streets and spaces that join these different projects and parts of the town um, together. You may be familiar with this famous quote from John Ruskin that the measure of a great civilization um, is found in the quality of its public spaces, its parks and squares. So we think about the public realm, we think about the impact that has on quality of life, on impressions, on first impressions. We think about how it affects businesses, um, how it, how it re, um, communicates to the visitor. It's hugely important for Balbriggan that the quality of the public realm mm -hmm. is as good as it can be. Um, you'll be familiar also with the term placemaking, which is fundamental to the plan for Balbriggan. And that is the idea of the contribution that different buildings and spaces make together to the quality of place. So it moves us away from thinking about red lines around project areas um, and only thinking about them in an individual fashion. Critical to placemaking is the involvement of people uh, and that's been critical to Balbriggan to make sure that local voices are clearly heard through the course of the project. Now the challenge, as you are well aware, uh, particularly last year, was the, the pandemic and the limitations that were possible on public gatherings. So as we commenced the project uh, last year, we had to resort to online technologies to engage in the first instance. But it's great to see now that we're moving more into the face to face meetings um, and the, the, the drop in event that's taking place over the next couple of days. We had a series of online workshops around different themes which were very helpful um, in, in to enable discussion around some key aspects of the public realm. Accessibility, children's play, the evening economy, green and blue spaces, walking, cycling and young people. So that's fed in, into the process. And then also we had an online survey and I hope that many of you had the opportunity to contribute to that survey at the beginning of the process. We had a fantastic response. Over a thousand people took time to respond to that survey um, and that forms the foundation upon which we're building the public realm strategy for Balbriggan. I'm going to just take you quickly through the findings of that survey um, and these presentations will be available um, after the, the webinar. So from the responses um, we had um, around 44% of people um, responding that are in the town every day, in the town centre every day. Um, so it was very much uh, local voices that were coming through in the present in the survey. The average ages were uh, around 35 to 54, so that middle age range. 
Um, less so from the younger population, and that's something that we've taken on board and we'll make sure we have more engagement with young people as the strategy uh, develops. We ask people why they visit the centre, and you'll see that the majority of people um, cited shopping as the main reason, as well as leisure and exercise. And uh, quite a low number actually coming through for people that work uh, in the centre. Um, when we ask people how long they spend in the centre of Balbriggan, the majority of people either spent less than an hour or one to two hours. And that's interesting. It, it shows that people are coming in and out of Balbriggan uh, and not spending particularly much time there. And that has a bearing on how the town performs economically and socially. We ask people what they like about Balbriggan and it's very important that we don't just dive into the problems, that we also understand what the positives are so that we can work with those and to develop them. We had a big response in relation to town centre spaces. So that was specifically the beach, the sea, but also the harbour and lighthouse. Um, people noted the square and the, the key street area and at recreational um, areas as well. They also cited uh, amenities and facilities in particular local shops and the library, independent coffee shops, the hotel and indeed super value um, as well. And another important uh, voice that was coming through was that sense of community, the friendliness of Balbriggan and the people that are there. So you can see from these responses that there's a positivity around the facilities that are there um, and a recognition that that wonderful coastal location is certainly a positive for the town. When we asked people what they disliked about Balbriggan Town Centre, you can see very clearly here that there were a number of, of key factors. Vacancy and dereliction uh, arose very prominently in the survey, and that's interesting. And that's specifically to do with boarded up shops um, and uh, the perception of, of dereliction and empty um, shops uh, along that main street. So whilst the number of derelict properties is actually quite limited in Balbriggan, we think it's the prominence of those that has a, a disproportionate impact on perceptions of the town. And therefore, it's very important that these projects are targeted through the Arrow Barbrigan um, exercise. You'll also notice that people cited a negative appearance, dirty buildings, litter, um, dated rundown. And that has a, a significant bearing um, on perceptions. Also a lack of meeting places, cafes, uh, things to do um, and the idea that people have to travel outside of the town, um, particularly at the weekend. And also a lack of places to sit as well. Um, a lack of swimming was also uh, noted and an important voice that came through was also that there could be more for young people and teenagers to do within the town. We asked people to score the following aspects of public realm and I'll quickly go through these bar charts um, here. Um, so first impressions were generally OK to, to uh, to, to negative. Um, public transport connections were generally fine. Uh, car parking was deemed to be OK. Uh, and signing and way, wayfinding was generally OK as well, although often that's aimed at people who are less familiar with the town than those that live there and present. However, you can see that uh, there was a generally poor um, view of pavements and footpaths and specifically access for wheelchairs, buggies and those with physical um, difficulties, mobility impairments. Um, the, the public realm of Balbriggan was scoring poorly. Cycle paths also, um, as you can see here, was generally uh, um, a view that there's great room for improvement in the quality of cycle paths and facilities in Balbriggan. Pedestrian crossings and road safety generally um, OK. Lighting and town centre after dark as well wasn't highlighted particularly negatively. However, cleanliness and the provision of bins was cited as, a, as an issue which certainly needs attention. Um, then we asked people to score existing aspects of the public realm. The quality of parks and, and green spaces, generally OK. The beach and other blue spaces, generally OK. However, access to squares and car free pedestrian spaces are generally poor. So there's certainly a demand for more pedestrian space and civic spaces within the centre. Interestingly as well, it was felt that there was a lack of natural spaces with wildlife habitats and biodiversity. So despite that wonderful coastal location, there certainly is room for improvement to improve the natural spaces and biodiversity of Valbriggan. Also places to sit outside, uh, benches etc um, was an evidence that there's improvement needed as were places to eat and drink outside as well. 
Places to play were generally OK, although certainly uh, room for improvement. Places for events outside, again, people felt that there was a need for more um, of those as well. So overall, we asked people how they rate the quality of their public realm at present. And you can see here, it's a close tie between people that felt it's OK to people that felt that it's quite bad and to some that feel it's very bad. So certainly the need for a public realm strategy is very clear and the findings of this survey are hugely valuable to us as we look to prioritise interventions that can improve the quality of life and public realm for everyone in Balbriggan. Top three priorities for Balbriggan's town centre, attractions and vibrancy, more outdoor dining, uh, out, uh, outdoor swimming, um, getting the shops populated, but also um, trees, beach amenities, um, opening up the, the canal, um, more creative places to sit and linger, somewhere to sit outside as well. And also um, cycle paths, uh, more provision of bins uh, and consideration for those with disabilities. And also a clean up as well within that. So that you can see that the suggestions coming through were greatly towards an improved outdoor spaces and leisure amenities. We had lots of other suggestions and I would invite you to take a look at these in more detail um, uh, after the webinar, but you can see some of the suggestions that have come through around improved spaces, facilities and amenities, public realm spaces and greening the town centre. And this is all wonderfully uh, helpful um, uh, uh, feedback for us as we develop the strategy for Balbriggan. So now I'm going to pass you to Kevin, uh, Kevin Burke from DBFL. He's going to take you through the initial um, findings of the active travel and transport uh, process. Apologies, can oh you can't see this there? One second. Okay, can you all see this? Oh, sorry, you get, uh, wrong screen. OK, apologies for that. So, um, yep, so my name is, is Kevin Burke. I am an associate with DBFL Consulting Engineers and um, you'll, you'll hear my accent. I'm not I'm not from Balbriggan, but I can I assure you a lot of my colleagues are from the North County Dublin area. Uh, they've, some of them have been to school in, in Balbriggan, um, so they're very excited to to take on this project. Um, as you can imagine, we're, we've been brought in. I think we came in in September as active travel consultants. So ob obviously, our you know our aim really will be to to maximise walking, cycling, uh, you know, micro mobility uh, connections in around the town. Um, I think Eva mentioned that to start. We're we're very much in the early stages of of our analysis. Um, we've you know so we. What's also required is a an overarching local transport plan. That's a requirement that Fingal have to undertake as part of the Eastern and Midland um, Regional Economic and Spatial Strategy. And um, so we some of this uh, some of these statistics will obviously be be pretty familiar to. It's a pretty sizable town in in Irish context. Uh, we know it's one of the fastest growing towns in Ireland, a young and multicultural population. And um, one of the key things I want to get across about this slide, because you, you know a lot of this, and I, I don't I don't want to, to reiterate what you know a lot of stuff that James said, but it's the Balbriggan in many ways it's blessed with a, a lot of important you know natural and built environment assets that you know include the harbour you know Mill Pond Park the historic town core and uh, I'd also include the railway station there it's a, it's a really an asset for for the for the town centre and um, but what's what's quite apparent from you know anybody visiting is is that there's a lot of space given over to the to the private car and um, there's a lot of you know public space there that's dedicated to the moving or, or parking of cars and there's some like like many towns in Ireland there's a legacy of I suppose heavy you know traditional highway engineering there and uh, as James um, you know commented on on his report and, and what you what you've said through the Arbal Brigan uh, process is that there's you know th generally there's a there's you know relatively poor quality uh, urban environment for pedestrians and cyclists and um, the lack of cycle lanes came through very much in in the in the those consultation responses and very much from a, for a professional point of view going there was quite evident there and um, we did see you know that people are cycling on the footpath which is which is um, a kind of you know giveaway sign that the conditions aren't, aren't suitable there. And um, there's a lot of street clutter and there's a lot of kind of hostile conditions for for pedestrians. Uh, despite that, there's a lot of um, I suppose really encouraging travel patterns in Balbriggan at, at 
at the moment. Um, about half of the commuter journeys within the study area for employment education are done by sustainable modes. It's a bit more than that actually, but the, the, some, the, the other half is done by private car. And um, there's a, I, I would say a higher, uh, a much higher percentage than most other towns journeys to school are done by walking and cycling. And we think there's a lot of potential to increase this further. Um, we, you know, with, with, I suppose, safe routes to school interventions. Um, you say 90% of journeys to work at Balbriggan is a high out commuting. Uh, you know, a lot of people, residents of Balbriggan, leave Balbriggan to, to go to work elsewhere. And they, I think it's important, and almost one in five households in Balbriggan don't own a car. Um, so that suggests that there's a big cohort of residents who, do, who depend on walking, cycling, and public transport. And as Balbriggan grows, we, you know, even if things were to stay as they were, there, there's still going to be a lot of walking and cycling trips. And obviously, we want to make we you know, we want to encourage more. We want to make them as safe as as possible. Um, as I, I mentioned, the kind of legacy of of um, highway engineering, and um, this, to be fair, you'll see this around the country. But you know, if I was to take High Street or Hamlet Lane. In many cases, they're missing footpaths. You can see there's a family trying to trying to, to cross the road um, to get down onto Key Street. Um, there's very narrow footpaths, missing footpaths around schools. Um, and, you know, in areas like this near the rail station where you'd expect a lot of high footfall, uh, there's a, you know, even though the streets are narrow, a lot of that space is given over to the, to the private car. Um, particularly, you know, crossing is, is hugely important and there's a lot of traditional, you know, highway engineer designs here. There's what's called bellmouth uh, junctions. Uh, it can be quite difficult to cross these streets if you're, particularly if you're, um, if you have a disability or elderly or if you're, you know, if you're a young child or you're, you're pushing a buggy, these, these are, can be quite tricky to cross. Um, I was quite keen to get, I, I, you know, almost a non-professional kind of view viewpoint from people who'd never been to Balbrig, and um, so we undertook what's called a healthy streets check. Um, in short, it's it's a toolkit developed in, in London by um, a health prof a health professor called Lucy Saunders. It's a very simple ten indicators um, uh, how how healthy in commas the street would be. Um, so we had four sample groups and they comprise a mix of ages and genders. Um, we focused on what you might call the main street, the Drogheda Street, Bridge Street, Dublin Street, Axis and the, the Key Street areas. And we simply asked them, OK, I, you know, 20 be a maximum score, but each of these 10 indicators, you know, how safe is it, is it how easy is cross? Is the, does the air feel clean? Or, clean. Uh, do pe are people choosing to walk or cycle? Do they feel safe? And we asked them, it's very much as subjective as perceptive based, but there was fresh eyes. We asked them to rate it so zero for poor, one good, two excellent. And in short, what they what they did is they more or less corroborated, even though they'd never been to Balbriggan, what, what the residents of Balbriggan uh, said. Here's some comments about, you know, um, about, you know, how, how perceived, how they perceived was easy to cross. And um, they thought they, they also picked up that there was, you know, narrow footpaths, that there was a lack of informal seating areas. That very much came true in, in James's work. And they felt that there was a lack of, you know, landscaping and greenery. Uh, the safety was, you know, kind of mixed. Um, and they felt that, you know, it was car dominated space, the um, Main Street. Um, the, again, the crossings and the kind of lack of cycle, cycle provision came up uh, quite a bit. Uh, the Key Street Harbour area, similarly low enough score for that. And, you know, some of the same issues. I think they, a, a big one was the lack of, you know, safety. People didn't perceive that area to be to be particularly safe. They mentioned that the shutters on, on some of the buildings and um, they felt, you know, the lighting, well, well, the field was particularly good and also the lack of natural or passive surveillance, a lack of eyes in the street from, you know, from, from those areas, see, you know, perceived to be quite um, empty. And um, they also felt, you know, you, you know, the pedestrians, there was limited evidence from what they could what they could see of, of people from all walks of life. Um, similarly, I mentioned that the railway station is is, is an asset from from Balbriggan, but at the moment it's quite difficult unless unless you knew where the rail, sta rail station was in Balbriggan, um, you'd probably find it a little bit difficult to find it. It's very much hidden from uh, plain view. Uh, it's a car dominated space. It's it's quite difficult to to walk across the forecourt. There's live traffic, and um, there is some you know cycle parking. There is a go car there but it, again it's quite it's it, kind of a lack of 
lack of kind of you know organization about the space there um, and and you know there, there are barriers to permeability and, and visibility there um, so what we've done is we've summarized a lot of this you, you as so you're, you're you live in here you'll be familiar with it we summarized it but some of the strengths is that there's a real strong policy basis for prioritization of, of active travel and um, there is funding there it's important to stress there it's, it's very much a, an exciting time in Ireland for for active travel um, and but it, what what is obvious is that you know a business as usual approach to land use to transport planning sustainable transport and, and parking isn't acceptable it, it won't it, you know we, we, we won't kind of achieve the kind of you know the, the goals that overarching um, vision for, for the town. As I mentioned, policy guidelines, we, we can't operate in a, in a vacuum when we're preparing strategies. We have to be consistent with national level, like, like climate action plan, uh, the national planning framework, the design manual for urban roads and streets, and also some of that local work that's, that's happened, you know, the, the Fingal uh, development plan, the, the existing and, and the future uh, draft. And, uh, you know, recently there was a draft uh, GDA transport strategy, um, or to public consultation, it was a revised cycle network plan there uh, you can see on the, the right hand side and I mentioned some of those projects that are, are you know, various uh, various steps of, of, of design uh, concept implementation be the Harry Reynolds Road, the Fingal Coastal Way and the NTA's five year plan. So I'm going to hand you back to James and I will in my next presentation I'll talk about the, the you know some of the concepts we're, we're looking at. Thank you very much, Kevin. So um, certainly lots of room for improvement in Balbrang, isn't there? Um, and that's where we're um, underway with the development of the public realm um, strategy. And this is very much building on the vision that's set out for our Balbriggan, building on the rich history and diverse and growing talent base. Um, Balbriggan is to be an ambitious, inclusive and prosperous community, harnessing its economic and physical advantages and enabling an excellent quality of life for all its people. So that's um, our, uh, our vision and the public realm strategy um, and also the design guide that we will be developing subsequently um, all needs to work towards the fulfillment of that vision. Now we've been busy in Balbriggan um, getting to know um, the town and understanding it um, as well. Uh, we have a whole series of, of um, sheets like these that are looking at the town in some detail, uh, looking at the relationships visually between different parts of the town, the fact that actually it's quite hard to find the sea if you're not familiar with Balbriggan, strangely enough, um, the importance of these little gateways that bring you, for example, underneath the railway line um, out to the coast, um, the importance of the square, um, but where else, uh, where is the centre um, of Balbriggan? Um, as well. But then also understanding the qualities and character of the different parts of the town, because Balbriggan has many wonderful attributes about it, and it's really important that we don't lose sight of those in, in, in the this, this search for, for the new and, and, and the modern. So that sense of place, what makes Balbriggan unique, what makes it special, is really important that we understand and we design with that rather than uh, coming along with something uh, completely different. It's also important that we understand the history of Balbriggan and those uh, landmarks, there's a number of prominent buildings and landmarks, but then there's also some small points of detail within the streetscape, which we shouldn't lose as we, we look to redevelop um, the public realm. And it's also about that shared identity. What is the identity of Balbriggan? How through signage, through public art, through lighting, can we express that positive identity of Balbriggan? Um, and really take on board the, the shared identity and the diversity as well that there is in Balbriggan uh, today. Now, you are all familiar with the context within which we are working, um, and there was a report released very recently um, to really um, uh, emphasise the, the, the climate crisis and the challenge that we all face. And you may be familiar with these, they're the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN and all Irish planning policy and indeed internationally is gearing towards the fulfilment of these Sustainable Development Goals. So we have a responsibility to think about the public realm within this context and to seek to make Balbriggan far more sustainable in how it functions. So we've developed uh, three aims and a series of um, thematic projects which form the structure of the public realm um, strategy. 
And the first of these is our nature. So this is about making space for nature and health. So to reduce our carbon footprint, allow bio biodiversity to flourish and to provide for healthier, happier lives. So that's the first aim of the public realm strategy. The second is our place. So this is about making space unique to Balbriggan, embracing heritage to confidently celebrate our sense of place and shared identity. So it's about looking after and conserving those heritage aspects, but then not being shy to also introduce contemporary design within that context. And the third aim is our people. So it's to make space for people, welcoming the vibrant diversity of Balbriggan's population, so revitalising our streets and spaces. And hopefully from those, you can hear echoes of the points that were coming through in the public survey that I presented earlier. So we have these three uh, core aims of the public realm strategy developing, and the connection between those enables us to identify a series of thematic interventions that can take place alongside the projects that are already confirmed for our Balbriggan. I'll just quickly take you through these. So our na nature, this is about habitat restoration. It's about the river corridors, the coastal meadows and, and the woodland. It's about urban planting. So that's about pollinators, street trees, building on the good work of tidy towns and the council, but across the, the town as a whole. It's also about managing our water. So looking at how we control surface water um, and uh, the natural water courses that are available. So there's great opportunity to improve biodiversity and access to nature um, along the coast, but also very importantly along the river as well as it comes through the town. And that can be an, uh, encompass a range of projects. And some of those can be actually quite small, but can have quite an impact on local levels of biodiversity, giving people the opportunity to get involved. Our place has a number of series of projects uh, alongside. So that's about protecting, conserving, restoring and reviving our heritage assets, but also interpreting and communicating them, telling the stories of Balbriggan. When you walk around Balbriggan at the moment, it's sometimes hard to know the significance of some of those historic structures. And there's ways in which we can communicate that, be it the, the castle, the, the Martello Tower, the lighthouse, or some of the churches um, as well. Civic streets and spaces is a fundamental part of the public realm and as, as Kevin outlined, they're a core part of the work that they're doing. And that's about looking at ensuring we have better access for everyone, but also introducing high quality design to the streetscapes. And very importantly, it's about rebalancing space. So it's trying to move away from that car dominated town centre that we have at the moment to provide good quality pedestrian and cycle space um, throughout. It's also about wayfinding and gateways. So that's how you find your way around, particularly for visitors, um, but also for locals as well. And that will involve mapping and signage, but also thinking about the arrival experience. How does our, how does Balbriggan say hello? How does it welcome you when you arrive? It's also those uh, gateways beneath the railway to make sure that they are safe and attractive points of arrival um, between the coast and the town. And it's also, of course, about green and blue ways connecting and threading through the town centre as well. And we need to, through that process, take another look at the, the, the provision of pedestrian spaces, cycling and, and car parking and vehicular space within the central streets. And then under our people, we have a series of projects as well about blue space access. So we have this wonderful coastline. How can we prove access to it? How can we get people to um, engage with the water and, and particularly those that perhaps have mobility impairments? Also about community green spaces. Um, there are so many green spaces within uh, Balbriggan, uh, particularly in the residential areas, and there's great opportunities for those to contribute more to the lives of, of residents that live there. And then how we bring those spaces alive. That's pop-up events and activities such as markets, outdoor dining and performances. So we have to create a public realm which then can be enlivened um, by residents, by businesses as well. And then last but not least, it's about play, about formal play pr provision, but also informal play, creating a playful landscape which really works for our young people. 
So you can see from this plan how we're building the strategy. We're identifying those gateways, those green spaces, those civic spaces, but then also looking at connections, particularly along the river corridor, along the coast, but then all of the other green spaces that exist within the residential neighbourhoods of Balbriggan and looking at how we can connect those together to fulfil the vision um, set out of the public realm strategy. So that sets out the, the strategy as it, it's currently sitting. Um, we would very much welcome your feedback on the public realm strategy and there'll be details of that afterwards regarding how you can give your feedback and help us to further shape the strategy and also inform the design guide that will accompany it. Just finally, I'm just going to uh, an example of a project that we've worked on in Northern Ireland. This is the Conswater Community Greenway in Belfast. And that was a project to create a linear park through uh, an, an urban area uh, which had a number of problems of, of flooding etc and the transformation of that project is really testament to how through public realm improvement you can really create a meaningful impact on an area and it's not just about creating attractive spaces it's about um, providing space for life and activity and for communities to celebrate so there's an interesting case study there um, that may be of relevance to Belbriggan as we prepare and develop the strategy. OK, I'm going to pass you back to Kevin now, who's going to take you through some further thoughts in relation to active travel and transport. Hi, uh, th thanks, James. Um, so the, this um, this second, this last presentation really is about the kind of the the you know transport objectives and some of the you know best practice uh, concepts that we've looked at elsewhere. Um, I think we were conscious as well that some of the the Fingal councillors had been been abroad on on study trips, uh, notably to Utrecht, a, a, a fantastic city, and and a lot to to learn as I, as I, I found found myself a few years ago. Um, but what we had to do is we had to set a set of draft objectives and you know to meet the transport plan and that's obviously to tie in with kind of achieving you know the divisions and and the the goals set out in your bal or balbriggan uh, work to date but also a, a kind of more prosaically allows us to assess uh, we'll have to develop a set of um, options for walking and cycling and various projects and allow us to to assess the you know how effective are are, are those um you know are, are those options or you know proposals again against our objectives um so the the, the first one was to pro provide a multimodal uh, transport plan and uh, to identify in interventions to encourage a transition to sustainable and low carbon transport modes um, uh, you'll probably have heard about the 15 minute town concept where the majority of, of Balbriggan's residents uh, living needs are met within a, a 15 minute safe walk or cycle from their homes. And uh, that's typically, you know, shopping, uh, education, recreation, sports facilities, GPs, etc. Um, one of the key things of Balbriggan is a, a, there's a, a lot of primary and secondary schools there. It has a wide catchment, uh, you know, people coming from outside of Balbriggan. Um, and we wanted to identify, I suppose, safe routes to school opportunities to ensure that more children could walk, could travel safely to school by walking and cycling. Um, we wanted to, you know, as James was alluding to there, with it, there's a, you know, th there's a lot of of natural and built environment assets in in Balbriggan, uh, such as the beach and the park and the harbour, and we want to facilitate safe and permeable walking and cycling routes to that, and and you know. Um, we also want to enhance the vibrancy, the accessibility and livability of Balbriggan through uh, placemaking and better balanced public space. And uh, finally, we wanted to, to improve the air quality and noise levels of Balbriggan town centre and uh, using a, a healthy streets approach. I mentioned we, you know, we looked at a number of, of case studies and uh, we, what we chose, we chose, I think we looked at about maybe 10 or 12. Uh, we narrowed that list down and we, you know, we, we chose them because they're relevant to Balbriggan and we looked at, you know, similar population size, kind of similar street networks, uh, you know, proximity to a major city, uh, proximity to an airport, similar transport challenges at any you know, various stages. Uh, we looked at, uh, you know, we did look at Utrecht, um, specifically, we looked at a suburb outside of Utrecht, a, a, you know, a relatively, um, 
I suppose a, a planned town uh, from the 50s, 60s, uh, and and the you know constant improvements. Um, we looked. Uh, we also we looked at Groningen. We looked at um, uh, the needs in in Belgium. We looked at Winchester and Dungarvan, and we weren't looking to just replicate. You know what what was there. We wanted to take. I suppose some of the key concepts and principles um, from from those places and even some larger cities like like Paris. You, you, you may have seen this, uh, you know, a, a very prevalent in, in recent um, recent weeks about introducing a, a cam zone in, in, in the center, you know, where uh, pedestrians and cyclists and public transport users would take priority. Um, and you know, we also we, you know we need to follow that design manual for urban roads and streets, the user hierarchy, i.e., that is pedestrians first, uh, cyclists, public transport, and and the needs of of car users. Um, uh, last, we did a look at low traffic neighbourhoods. Uh, they're very, uh, you know, they've, they've been around for a long time in the continent, more prevalent in the UK in the last few years. I mentioned the healthy streets, uh, filtered permeability and introducing that green, you know, greenery into and home zones in, into residential areas. Uh, we also looked at transit oriented development. I think the, the railway station and, and bus is, is, is in, you know, underexploited uh, resource that Balbriggan has. And, but to do this, it does rely on what we call reallocation and carriageway space, taking you know space from from the private vehicle and and giving it to, to facilitate walking and cycling and interchange high quality interchange with the between the, the rail and bus. If we still look at some examples from from Ireland and abroad, filtered permeability, that's really about you know giving you know priority to pedestrians and cyclists within their residential areas and connecting them to their to their villages and town centres just simply through what someone might may call a road closure, but you can see the the idea here. It's you know there's a lot of greenery. There's there's reclaimed par, uh, park space, the public space here, and um, they're very much traffic cam streets that you you know you'd be happy to let your your children uh, play out on. Again, taking those concepts from from the Netherlands and and um, and Ireland, that kind of very much you know the the narrow carriages al allowing people to access their homes by by car if they needs be, but not giving too much space to that. And obviously, you know, the thing called coastal way. There, there's a number of of you know best practice uh, examples out there. Um, I mentioned a railway station. There has been some recent uh, examples in Ireland where you know where we're looking to improve the public space around it, get that pedestrian priority, you know, straight to the to the station right, and um, make it look very much more, uh, you know, a, a, a public space and more manageable. And we've seen a, in Limerick and in uh, Grange Gorman. Um, where you know that that space has been certainly reclaimed for pedestrians. Um, and and in better interchange with our modes. And um, if we're to look to the continent, what we what we see a lot is this idea of a mobility hub, um, where you'd you'd incorporate a number of sustainable transport interventions, such as you know car sharing, cycle hub, and um, also you know parcels, uh, parcel motels, storage lockers, to minimise that need to to travel, uh, you know, separately to to all these. Uh, real time information, etc. So they they can take the form of on street mobility points, or they can be a, a kind of a more comprehensive um, a building that incorporates all all these um, things. So so taking those I suppose those concepts and we applied a very um, almost like a you know a high level concept. What we're what we're thinking or our, our, our thoughts at this stage is is to you know calm that area around Main Street, uh, Key Street, the the beach and harbour area, um, maybe look look to potentially reduce the the speed limits there, um, you know introduce almost a traffic cell, take advantage of the the you know the Harry Wren Road and and the other you know the, the road network to to put those you know those vehicles that will be passing through and get it, get them to use the right roads for want of a, a, a better expression, um, and those arterial roads where where they'd be they would all have to incorporate pedestrian. Uh, a, a, a pedestrian and, and cycle infrastructure and also you know traffic calming those local streets the majority of streets in, in the study area are, are residential streets and um, what we you know what we're trying to avoid is you know the rat running or, or you know we, we want those spaces to be seen as public spaces for for um you know for, for people of all ages so i will hand you back um i i, I think to to Brefney and Aoife 
at this point. I think we're at the question and answer stage here. Um, so thank you very much for listening and obviously happy to take your, you know, take your, your questions. Thank you so much, James and Kevin, for your inputs. Um, yeah, let's go to our questions. OK, I have a question here uh, from someone who describes themselves as a student in Balbriggan. Uh, the population of Balbriggan is very young. Uh, are there plans for spaces where young people can socialise in the future? Um, I might pass that over to Aoife in the first instance, and perhaps James, you might wish to come in. Thanks, Breffney. Um, that's a very good point raised, you know, and it, it's something that's come up time and time again uh, when we've been talking to people. Um, it's about youth spaces for for the young people of Balbriggan, which is a very young town, and. Um, what we are doing is kind of taking that on board and we want to develop places that you know are safe places that are free and that have kind of unstructured access so you don't have to check in with someone and you know uh, you know there, there are sports facilities and, and there's good sports facilities here in in Balbriggan and there are more coming with the development of the sports hub and the recreational hub up at Braymore um but you know what we're seeing is that you know the sports clubs are, are able to cater for a certain portion of the young people, but you know, people want unstructured, young people in particular want unstructured access to, to places. So we're really taking that on board and trying to listen to that voice and, and find out what do they need and where do they need it. So um, definitely as part of our work with the Balbriggan uh, pillar groups is looking at the provision of spaces for young people. And when we're looking at that, um, we're, we're looking for those kind of unstructured places where they can freely gather that have the facilities that they need, seating, shelter, well lit, um, where young people aren't going to be moved on or, or, um, or chased off because they're a nuisance or anything like that. We want them to be places for young people by young people. So we do have a piece of work to kind of further our engagement. We, we've done some engagement with, with young people, but we will be doing more. Um, we've recently been talking to some of the schools to further that engagement with those students that are based in the town. And we'll also be dealing with, with Fingal Sipsi as well, trying to, to tap into the young, young voices uh, to find out exactly what it is they need so that we can take that on board and develop out those spaces. So that's something that we definitely do want to develop over the next Next 12 to 18 months is that we start to respond to that uh, and deliver those spaces for young people. It's going to take us a little bit of time because we do want to do that piece of engagement to find out exactly what young people want rather than what we think they want uh, and where do they want it. So um, that's a piece of work that's ongoing at the moment and hopefully we'll be able to deliver that in the short to medium term. James, I don't know, do you want to come in and say anything on that? Well, really just to agree with what you're saying, and I think um, generally in Ireland we've um, let young people down in terms of the, the, the spaces that we create, and, and it's really important that we have welcoming civic spaces in Balbriggan uh, in which young people um, can spend time and, and congregate. So I think there's certainly work to be done there, but I think projects like the, the Key Street project will be really important in that regard in providing good quality um, space for young people in Balbriggan. Thank you so much, uh, Aoife and James. Um, I just go to our next question here. The question, will bioswells be considered as part of the surface water management? Um, I think in the Our Nature, you may have mentioned those, James. Um, is there anything that you want to say uh, on those? Yeah, I think absolutely. Bioswales are, are a really important feature of sustainable urban drainage. Um, you need space um, for them, so some of the, the more narrow historic streets, that would be tricky. But certainly there's plenty of spaces in, in Balbriggan that would be suitable to that. They retain surface water, so it, it helps to um, reduce the risk of flooding, but also it creates ecological habitat um, as well. So yeah, that's a great uh, point there, and, and, and I certainly would love to see bioswales coming forward um, as we deliver the, the public realm strategy. Thank you, James. Uh, we have another one here. Um, I think it's coming from a couple of people, so I'll, I'll attempt to summarise it. Um, 
in essence, it's asking, is there a way that the safer routes to schools uh, gonna, can be prioritized? Uh, I think you may have mentioned as uh, you know, Kevin, um, um, and someone mentions the, the school bus um, and, and safety around that. So um, you might want to come on there um, and uh, gonna perhaps if Aoife has anything to add. Yeah, yeah. So in in short, uh, I think it's Katrina. So they in, in short, yeah, you'll have seen that we we have a specific objective around safer routes to schools. Um, that, that you you'll probably be aware that there's there's DNT have uh, provided local authorities with a with funding, uh, multi-year funding over the next few years to 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 certainly look at things like wider footpaths. Uh, cycle provision in and around schools, um, reducing traffic movements out, outside of the out, outside of the in the immediate vicinity outside the schools. Um, I can assure you that the many of the projects we we're looking at will have, uh, as I said, it's an active travel project, so it has very much. Uh, we'll be looking to to you know shift any of those longer distance trips or short distance trips to, from from the private car uh, to cycling and and walking. So very much our, our interventions will will very much have that in mind. I might just come in there now. After that, um, the the council is obviously uh, looking at the safer routes to school across the county. Um, you know, we've already rolled out one. It was very successful. It does take uh, a serious amount of engagement, though, and consultation. So um, the Balbriggan team is working with our active travel department. So we're one of the few councils now that have a dedicated team looking at the, this kind of work. And, you know, the, the safe routes to school is very high priority for the council and for the active travel unit. So um, there's high demand across the county for this. You know, a, a lot of parents are concerned about, you know, their children's mobility to and from school and making sure that that's a safe route for them to travel. Um, so it is something that the council is progressing across the whole county and we're going to be working very hard with the active travel team to make sure that it rolls out. So um, what that schedule will look like, though, is, is something that's under debate now because obviously there's a huge demand across the county for it. But we'll continue to liaise with the active travel department and, and try and get it rolled out as quickly as possible across the county. And we can update people as, as we go on the rollout of that safe routes to school programme. Thanks, Brefney. That's great. Thank you so much, Aoife and Kevin. Um, they're coming in thick and fast now, so uh, we'll just go to another one. Um, I think in some of the maps that you showed, James uh, and Kevin, uh, the Mill Pond Park stretch uh, was shown up. Um, and there's a question here. Um, will the linking of the Mill Pond Park to the Main Street try to maintain as much greenery as possible? Um, and um, or will it be focused on the pedestrian and, and cycle access? Um, or perhaps they both may coexist, but uh, you know, I, I might bring you, uh, you know, on that, James. And again, uh, you know, Aoife may wish to add something. Yeah, it's a really good point. The Mill Point Park is is amazing. I must confess, I didn't know it before I I, I started this this project. Um, but there's a real um, need to connect it with the coastline. Um, that that need is is twofold. One is is movement, so it's it's pedestrians and cyclists, but also it's about an ecological uh, connection as well. So I think. Um, Absolutely, retaining as much vegetation as possible is going to be a really important aspect of that project. But as ever with Public Realm, it's about striking the right balance. So it's providing a green space um, habitat, but then also providing the space needed for pedestrians and cyclists, um, giving them a real alternative to the car. Thanks, James. I, I might just come in uh, to echo what you've said there. Um, the Mill Pond Park is kind of a hidden gem in Balbriggan. I think, you know, uh, the locals know all about it, but if you're a blowing, you probably don't. So, you know, it's a wonderful alternative to, to getting through the town. You know, if you're in the town centre and you need to get down to the church, you know, you know, it's a far more pleasant route to be taking. So what we really want to do is, you know, accentuate that and, and you know, call it out and say, look, look at this fantastic route through the town. How many towns have that, uh, you know, a river right through the town with with a great park going along it? You know, it, it's really something we need to celebrate and um, make the most out of. So, you know, absolutely, we'll be looking to retain as much greenery as we can along there. And we're going to balance that uh, with the pedestrian and cycle route because we want more people to know about it and more people to use it. 
it. Um, you know, as Kevin had said earlier, you know, some of the streets are quite narrow uh, in Balbriggan. So, you know, if you're talking about, you know, permeability and you're talking about getting people from the outskirts of Balbriggan into the into the centre of the town, you know, it's a wonderful route to take. You know, you don't have to disrupt traffic or, or, or parking. You can use that route and it, and it is a fantastic route. So we're definitely going to be looking into the best possible use of that. But obviously we want to make sure it stays a green route. We want to make sure it's pleasant and that it's attractive to people and we want to make sure that it connects up. So it's really going to be kind of the green heart and lungs connecting Key Street and the beach all the way through to Mill Pond Park. You know, it, it's going to be a real uh, asset, you know, and we want to just, you know, the, the asset is already there. We just need to make more of it. So um, that's going to be an important project when we bring it forward. And uh, as I said, with the phasing of the projects, we're, we're a little bit away from us at the minute, but uh, it'll be coming up uh, probably in the medium term. So pr probably two years away before you start really seeing so some real uh, movement on that project, but it's going to be an important one for us. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, guys. James, Aoife, thanks for getting through those. Like I said, they're coming in thick and fast, so we'll try and get to you through a, a couple more here and uh, you know perhaps just call out some of the comments um uh, you know one here uh, i guess it uh, relates to some of the uh, perceptions uh, james in terms of dereliction uh, and his comment here or question rather i can perhaps um is there an opportunity to use some of these derelict buildings um perhaps for meal wise spaces for uh, for groups or, or, or business and you know can we be working with the owners um well in some case they think okay to cancel ourselves so i mean th th there is opportunity there i think um again uh possibly james and, and Eve might want to come in just very briefly because there are a number of others which would be good to get to yeah, certainly from my perspective it's great to try and breathe life into to vacant buildings it, it can be hard though as you know um to do with uh, ownership, um, health and safety, etc. But if there are opportunities for doing that, then we'd really recommend that they're pursued um, to really bring life back onto the streets. Thanks, James. Um, just coming in on that, obviously, you know, using the, the buildings um, as meanwhile spaces is, is something that we're very interested in doing. Uh, the ones we can actively progress are, are buildings within our own control. Um, so up until now, we've been hampered slightly by COVID and that we couldn't have any, any kind of public events, face to face events. But now with restrictions eased, you know, the Balbriggan team will be looking to to have things like this webinar and these information sessions. We'd be looking to move to do some of these things in person again and to, to kind of use some of the spaces that we have acquired over the last year or so that we put them to use in the short term. And um, so we will definitely be looking to use some of these vacant buildings or derelict buildings um, for, for meanwhile uses in in over the summer and beyond. Um, it'll be a little bit more difficult with the ones that we don't own, but uh, we're, we're very interested to engage with um, anybody who owns any of these properties to, to try and get them back into to use. So, you know, um, we're happy to have those conversations with those building owners, uh, but the ones that we can actively progress are the ones under our control and we'll definitely be looking to do that this summer. Thanks, Brittany. That's great. Thanks so much, James and Aoife. Um, again, I'm going to attempt to uh, group a couple of comments here which have come in uh, around lighting uh, and uh, what's perceived as lack of in some locations or perhaps the quality of lighting in, in, in other locations, particularly the main street uh, 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 and the, the safety issues perhaps which uh, can I go with that. So. Um, I don't know whether anyone wants to comment, uh, you know, on uh, you know, lighting again, James, is it something that came up in the, um, the, the surveying perhaps? Yes, absolutely. I'm kind of conscious I didn't really talk about lighting very much in my presentation, but it's an integral part of the public realm. Um, and I would agree that the quality of lighting in Balbriggan is, is, is variable um, and that has an impact because it impacts upon perceptions of safety as well as real uh, levels of safety. So um, the quality of the, the, the after dark experience um, is going to be critical to encouraging greater use of the public realm. And that's not just late at night, that's uh, a winter's afternoon um, as well, which is, is really important. We also need to be mindful of light pollution 
um, and the environmental impact of lighting as well. Um, so, but the, the great thing is there's great strides in technology technology of lighting um, and and smart lighting as well that can be used to minimise um, uh, the negative aspects. But but thank you very much for the, for those comments because it's a good reminder that 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 has to be an integral part of the public realm strategy. That's great. Thanks so much, James. Um, OK, look, I think we're going to attempt to draw things to a close here. I'm just going to call out perhaps um, you know, some of uh, you know, the comments. There's a the comments um, regards um, will some of the goals outlined today be, be used to inform decision making? Uh, you know, absolutely. Um, in terms of uh, pedestrian pathway and scaries, uh, you know, that'd be part of the whole uh, Fingal Coastway proposition. So that's been worked through um, with someone here who uh, describes themselves as physically impaired and talks about traffic calming being great, but I uh, you know that perhaps putting an extra burden on a uh, you know, pedestrian and further work walking. So certainly, I uh, you know we, we'd wish to have uh, more conversations regards to those types of issues uh, and, and we'll come to opportunities uh, to do that. So thank you for your comment. Um, opportunities for um, restaurants and cafes to, to engage with communities and perhaps opportunities for lingering um, uh, junctions uh, in particular places so we we'll take on that comments on board where people have uh, flagged those and yeah um, open spaces in particular areas as well I'd say um, look, we've had a really good engagement uh, you know, this evening. The primary purpose was um, around information sharing, which uh, hopefully we've done. Uh, we will publish all of the slides and the webinar uh, you know, post this evening, so uh, that information will be there for you. Uh, we have an opportunity tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, where we're going to be opening the hub, have all the information panels available between 4.30 and 6.30. So if you do want to carry on the discussion or conversation, please do drop in and be members of the team here. I'd be very happy to speak to you on any aspects uh, you know, of those. I think there's three very strong themes emerging in terms of our nature, people and, and place. So uh, I know we're going to be looking to uh, you know, get your further uh, you know, feedback uh, on uh, you know, those elements. So uh, you know, thank you, uh, you know, James, and, and, and for your analysis on that, and Kevin indeed for, um, for sharing some of the uh, analysis and, and thinking in terms of uh, you know, joining up the dots, I suppose, to make Balbriggan the very best town it could be. So uh, uh, and lastly, of course, thank you, uh, you know, to Aoife and the producer for the evening, uh, you know, Mark Broderick. So, so thank you, audience. Uh, thank you for giving up your time. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will publish the webinar and all the materials associated with it. And we look forward to carrying on the conversation with you. Thank you. <laughs>